Hey guys, welcome back. Today I wanted to educate you on why there are so many pets in shelters. This gets brought up a lot that there are tons of pets in shelters so you should always adopt. So I want to educate you as to how those pets end up there because I feel like a lot of people may not know. So one of the top reasons that pets end up in shelters is because people are not responsible pet owners. They don't get their pets spayed or neutered. So what that means when you get your pet spayed or neutered, it means that they cannot reproduce. And I know this sounds very basic, but some people don't know this. And some of the reasons that I've heard that people have mentioned that they didn't want to get their pets spayed or neutered is that they felt like their pet wouldn't have a full life in a complete life if they weren't a mother at least once. Um, I've had people tell me that their dog wouldn't be manly if it didn't, you know, if it, if it had to get neutered. So there's all kinds of weird, in, rid, there's all kinds of weird, ridiculous reasons that people don't get their pets fixed, but they really should. When they don't get their pets fixed, then they have these unplanned puppies and kittens that have nowhere to go. So that's why, that's one of the top reasons. The other top reason that I think pets end up in shelters is because people don't do their research. I have said this on my blog and my post about how to find the perfect pet. I've said this many times over when people have asked me, you need to do your research before you get a pet. Whether it's a dog, cat, a parakeet, parakeet whatever, you need to do your research to see if that pet is gonna fit with your lifestyle. I think a lot of cats and dogs end up in shelters because people don't do research to see whether or not the, the cat or dog or whatever is going to be a fit for their lifestyle. They don't have the time or energy or money to devote to that pet, so they give up the pet. If you're a low energy person, you need a low energy pet. And you also need to know that there is no such thing as a low energy puppy. All puppies are gonna be pretty much high energy. If you are a high energy person, you might want a higher energy pet. So it's absolutely imperative that you do your research. I think another reason that pets end up, mostly dogs, a lot of this is gonna be kind of dog centric, but I think another reason that, that pets end up in shelters is that people don't train their pets. So they don't spend the money to go to obedience classes. They don't spend the time to train their pet to make their, tr their pet you know, good to live with, a good roommate. So for me personally, with Phaedra, um, her, her breeder was somebody who also handled and showed dogs. So Phaedra came kind of trained in a lot of ways. Like she came down with the basics of sit and shake and she didn't bark. So she had a lot of really good behaviors, but I still did obedience classes with her because poodles are very, very smart and they need the stimulation. Plus I wanted her to be, I wanted to know how to teach her things so that she would be a good companion for me. So I have never regretted that. I feel like if you have a pet, especially a dog, you need to spend time training them so that you'll enjoy being around them. I think a lot of people do give up their pets because they don't do that. And then they're like, well, my pet is, you know, he jumps on people or he's annoying or he, or he barks. Well, all of that is behavior that you can train out of them. You also need to socialize your pet. And so sometimes dogs end up in shelters because they haven't been socialized. And if they're afraid of other animals, if they're afraid of other dogs, if they're afraid of people, you know, they might have fear reactions where they might pee when they're scared or they might bite or bark. So there's a lot of like behavioral stuff that, that gets fixed through proper socialization. Again, I did obedience classes with Phaedra. There were other dogs there, so she was socialized like that. I took her to the dog park. She was socialized there. I took her to work with me in my office. We had 30 people of all different like shapes and sizes and colors. So she got exposed to a wide variety of people, of other pets, um, so that she would be basically cool around all of them and enjoy them rather than freaked out barking or trying to attack them. So it made her a much better dog. I think another reason that sometimes um, pets end up in shelters is that they buy a pet and it's from like a puppy mill or a pet store and it has like health issues that are expensive so they give up the pet because let's let's face it money is a factor. Sometimes people don't have the money to take care of their pet. They underestimate how much a pet is going to cost so they have to give them up. Um, I think if people lose their jobs, they might also give up their pet because sometimes they may not be able to find another job fast. I'm not saying that that is right. That is not what I'm saying at all, but I think that's one of the reasons people have done that. Another reason pets end up in shelters is because of a radical lifestyle change. Like maybe you go from being able, from working at home, being able to be around your pet all day to having to travel all the time and then you're just not there for your pet. So some people would give up their pets for that reason. Another reason I've seen people give up their pets to shelters is moving. They said they couldn't take their pets with them. In fact, kind of the reason we had Max is because his um, owner, who was a friend of ours, she was divorcing her husband and she couldn't find any apartment that would let her take her pets. 
So we kind of took Max in and he was eight years old, so he was an older pug and older dogs are much harder to adopt. And it was supposed to be a temporary thing because Ray's allergic to him, but we ended up keeping him until he you know, passed on. So we had him for a long time, even though my husband was allergic to him. So that ties into another reason I think that pets end up in shelters is allergies. You can develop allergies to anything at any time in your life, which really sucks. I think sometimes what happens is people develop allergies to their pets and they have to give them up. Uh, sometimes medication works, sometimes it doesn't. My husband, Ray, takes allergy pills every day. And when Max was living with us, he would still have, um, you know, like itchy eyes, his skin would get itchy, uh, his nose would be congested all the time. So it was really miserable, but we felt sorry for him. So we kept him, you know, he's a sweet boy. It's just, he was terrible, terrible, terrible for Ray's allergies. And while he lived with us, Dave ended up developing allergies to dogs, which never thought that would happen. So, you know, we saw firsthand what that was like. And I think we were very lucky to be able to have, you know, I, I helped take care of him so that neither of the people who were allergic to him had to, had to. So I felt like, you know, we were really lucky to be in a situation where we could continue to take care of an animal that he was really triggering allergies really bad. But that's one of the reasons for us that it's very important we never have another pet that causes allergy issues. So all of those reasons are why I think shelters are overfilled with animals that desperately need homes. Um, you can look up these facts on the, the ASPA, C, I think it's the ASPCA and the Humane Society website. You can check out Caesar's Way, his website too. He has some of this information as well. The overcrowding in shelters is not caused by responsible pet owners or ethical breeders. And I feel like there's a lot of people who like to say, oh, if you buy from a breeder, you're a horrible person. No, that's not the case. Because if you are somebody who's put in the time and research to find a pet and you've tried to go through a rescue and can't find the dog through a rescue, you, so you go through a breeder, there's nothing wrong with that. Some people choose to go to a, a breeder directly and they have to find an ethical breeder because they have allergy issues. Um, some people don't want to get a dog that might put their children at risk with it biting because I've had friends who've adopted from shelters who they were told, oh, this dog is perfectly fine with children only to have the dog turn around and bite their children. So, you know, there's a lot of other factors at play. Also, I want to touch on the topic of kill shelters. So really what a kill shelter is, is an open admission shelter. Open admission shelters are shelters that receive government funding and they are required to take all animals that come to them, but they have a limited amount of space. Basically, they are the ones who clean up after the irresponsible pet owners who didn't research their pet and so they abandon them or they're moving and they can't take their dog with them. They're the ones who clean up that mess. So I know that there's a lot of hate towards the, the kill shelters as well, but that's why they're doing what they're doing. So anyway, I hope that you feel like you know a little bit more about why there are so many animals in shelters. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share. And if you haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss my next video. Thanks so much for watching.